Hey, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that this review is part of a series of reviews of the 1999 LEGO Star Wars sets, and there is a playlist available where you can see all of them. So now on to this week's review. Hey, what's up you guys? This is MC Lego Boy here with 7140 X-Wing Fighter. It is 266 pieces and retailed for $30 back in 1999. And I was able to recently pick this up off of Bricklink for only $40, which is quite the deal. Like only going up $10 in 20 years, that's that's a good deal, man. And it was the set that uh, made it official that I had Every 1999 LEGO Star Wars set, except for that one Mindstorms thing, but again, it's listed in Mindstorms, not Star Wars, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and kind of gave me the idea, well, you know, I'm bored, might as well try and get uh, all the, the, the reviews made of all the 1999 sets. If I ever get around to getting all the 2000 sets, and maybe just the play sets, I'm not going to try and get uh the ultimate collector stuff uh at least not right now <laughs> uh i don't know maybe maybe but anyway let's talk about some uh interesting things when it comes to minifigures so here we go we're gonna grab r2d2 this is the old version of R2-D2, where his head was only printed from the top, only went that far down, and uh, it looks the most like R2-D2 in my opinion, because this is what I grew up with, and I'm hungry. <laughs> I've, I haven't eaten breakfast. I really should have. But something interesting is that uh, the instructions, uh, just like the lightsaber or Qui-Gon's hair, show the prototype of R2-D2. And as you can see, there's a big difference. They actually decided to go more accurate uh, on R2-D2 instead of make it easier on themselves and just have uh, the same pad made twice so that you could have a blue one and a red one. Uh, because this design, uh, in red shows up later in the Y-Wing. And was used at a couple other times, uh, for other people. Um, it's... can't get Luke out of the cockpit. There we go. We got Luke. He does come with a lightsaber. Um, I'm just going to leave it in there, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, Luke Skywalker. I uh, had gotten Luke as a pilot one other time before, and that was the uh, 2003 AT-AT. So, yeah. Cool to have uh, the official version, I guess. The 1999, yeah. lightsabers down in there this is how the uh the cockpit is uh designed you guys he just sits down in there with his hands down he can't even look forward but there are little panels for him to control and uh then you've got the the great i don't know what it is the uh i guess the screen showing what's on his radar or like his his uh uh, targeting is targeting that's what it is uh because there's the targeting computer but then there's the actual monitor that shows the targeting happening um we have a rebel uh technician at least i think that's what it's called what is it called in here let's take a look he's called nothing R2-D2 gets a name, Biggs Darklighter gets a name, Luke Skywalker gets a name, this guy is a nobody. 
It's pretty funny. And also sad. My heart goes out to you, Rebel, Rebel Technician. But yeah, this guy, he's got uh, an old, like, western or old uh, castle face. Big old mustache. Some stubble going. Very American. Very, uh, you know. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, could could be a British thing. I don't know. I, they, they filmed the movies in... in in Britain and there were a number of actors that were English that they dubbed over and they're like background people they're all British um, so you know you know there, there might be somebody in the background with a giant mustache we can come up with a name for that guy um, finally we have Biggs Darklighter his helmet looks great and he was only recently remade for the X-Wing back in 2018 and uh, he just uses a generic uh, mustachio face. Uh, oh no! It's okay. Big dark lighter gets to die. In the movie, he gets to die on my review. Spoiler alert! There we go. But yeah, mustache. Just a standard minifigure mustache from the 90s. And probably earlier. <laughs> hey, come on, sit down. We got this fun little tram that can uh, run around. We've got this box that's composed of two bricks. I have no idea what it is. It could be a giant battery. It could be something else. Not sure. Um, what's great about this is that uh, they're using one of these like double wedged guys and it just slides in there and it really stays in place because uh, these guys they do kind of fold in just a little bit and that gives it just enough pressure on here these yellow cones are the uh, lighting batons so you know come come forward obviously a little section to seat people and then we've got a little toolkit and a refueling line. So, take that off, start plugging it into to the X-Wing somewhere. And, uh, really should be moving this out of the way just so that it's not causing as many problems with the camera as we talk about the actual X-Wing itself. So what I love about this is it's gray. <laughs> this is one of those things to where it's like, okay, what is the color of an X-Wing? Because it looks gray in space, but then if it's on the ground, it also kind of looks a little gray. They use white now because it's also a very light gray, so it kind of looks white. Honestly, the best color was probably uh, Thok white. If you're a Bionicle fan, you know who Thok is. Yo, yo, Paraka! We got a... Uh, Great color for uh, the uh, Paraka character of Thok. Uh, I've never seen it actually, but I imagine that had that color stayed in use, uh, that would be uh, what X Wings would be made out of. But considering uh, what the new restrictions are on like how many pieces can be uh, recolored um, and uh, and how often, that that would have to be something that's like okay, we're gonna commit to this, and it's like everybody gets to use this, no restrictions at all, but. At the same time, I was like, I don't know. We might have a problem here. Um, I don't know. I'm rambling. Uh, I also, I like its size. You know, it's not too big. It's not uh, horribly small. Um, it's not perfect. It's not detailed as, uh, not as detailed as even the 2003 version, which, I mean, like, had the proper uh, shape of the, uh, of the nose, there's all sorts of things, but you know what? I am okay with that. I, I'm I'm perfectly okay with inaccuracies in uh, Star Wars sets, especially older ones. I mean, it just it's what gives them their charm, man. 
So, you know, I mean, it's like we're using bright red instead of dark red because dark red didn't exist yet. There's all sorts of things. Um, we've got a hatch up here that opens up. Um, I, I suppose this is somewhere that you can throw the black box, although the problem with that is... How are you going to get it out of there? Because it's not going to want to slide out easily. It's, it's, it's already kind of getting friction from just the walls. Like, I... Seems like a bad idea, in my opinion. Got a little bit of a detail down in here. There's not much. Um, so, yeah, it probably could have been better, but uh, whatever. I <laughs> uh, love these little rebel, uh, these printed pieces for the Rebellion stuff and, and just little greebles and things. Uh, the Red 5 markings. So... You know, you can't have Biggs fly this and it be his actual uh, X-Wing. Because what is he? Is he Red 3? Or is he Red 2? Point is, uh, you, you won't be able to do that. But, you know, no, nobody's going to be paying that close attention to what you're doing. And, like, being too much of a stickler for you. If, you're, if you've got somebody that's being too much of a stickler, then, you know... Tell them to chill out. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just using regular little hinges. Click hinges. You can also do some funny things like that with them. Um, better than the slow turning thing to that opens them up. It, this is at least faster. So you know, just like pow, pow. Pow, pow. I'm a little scared of the new versions where you just like flick a switch, or you turn a dial, and it pops open. I feel like that's going to be putting too much stress on some things, and they're going to break. Just, you know, I don't trust it. Um, we can <gasps> remove this landing gear easily, um, and it it's actually said to do that <gasps> in the instructions, except the engines keep falling off. That's not what is said to happen. And you've got a nice little opening here to where you remove that. You take off too much of that. Oh no. That was not supposed to happen. We were supposed to get the leg to split off like that. I mean, like, I suppose you could throw uh, Luke's lightsaber in there, but the problem with that is that there are these holes there and there where the blade if it caught in to the studs it can slide all the way in either direction and it, it'll be harder to get out however i have found that it's a great place to store the front landing gear back landing gear you can't really do anything about so you might as well just leave it on there to be honest doesn't get in the way uh, and, you know, it kind of makes it a little easier to hold uh, things right there. Also, I mean, like, when you look up here, they've put in a tile and a, and a slope there. On this, on the underside, they didn't put in uh, any sort of slope. I have no idea if that was actually in frame before or not. And there you go. So they put in a tile and a slope there. Well, they didn't put anything here, so it's obviously got enough room to... Go down there. You can also hyperextend these wings to make it a super X-wing. Make it look really silly. There we go. Um, it's actually kind of technically an illegal connection because I don't think it's actually fully uh, snapped into place. So that will kind of slightly stress out parts, something like that. But just doing that, that's simple enough. It's good. Yeah, nice and sturdy little model. Just get a good hold by the the nose here. Uh, that's one of the things about uh, other versions is that you know they they're using these uh, the little hinge pieces and they're using bricks that are coming in toward one another. And you can hold it there, but it's not quite as sturdy because it's not just like solid everywhere. This is solid everywhere, so you know. Simple little X-Wing. Keep doing that. There we go. 
Get the landing gear back out. Do that. Third one in. Do that. And you're basically done. Like, the set, there's nothing, like, overly spectacular when it comes to the, the building techniques. There's no snot. There, there's nothing that's going to blow your mind, you know. Even for 1999, this is fairly straightforward, I, I guess. I don't know. I, I think it's more, it's like, hey, it's an X-Wing, not, hey... Look at all the, the crazy things we were able to do, you know. Um, trying to remember. I, I did some research on something recently. I want to say that these uh, big giant wedges for the wings, I think they actually were made for Lego Star Wars. I'm not 100% sure on that. But I want to say they were. Because when I was on BrickLink and I was looking through like all the different parts... Um, and, and just like, you know, thinking about it, it's like, hey, you know, these are kind of conveniently sized, uh, how come? Uh, and it, and it, I think I remember, it only comes in light gray in Star Wars sets. All the other sets, uh, they were after 1999, and they were in all the other different colors. So that says to me that it was made specifically for the X-Wing, but then it could also be used in, uh, the Gungan sub- I want to say it might have been used in something else, but I don't remember. Uh, and the Naboo fighter. Is there anything else super interesting to say? No, not yet. Um, nice little printed piece right here. I like this printed piece. This printed piece is nice. Look at it. It's pretty. Hey guys, this is MC Lego Boy of the future. I know, based off of what you can see before you, but... I forgot to do this for uh, the X-Wing review to show you guys this super cool comic. Uh, so you get Luke, he's crashing down on Endor, and he doesn't know what to do, but he gets an idea. He'll rebuild his ship into a little swamp speeder thing, uh, but then, you know, you get this giant uh, monster coming out after him, so he pulls out a phone, he starts calling for help, gets away on another little speeder, and all three of those that you can build at the same time. No, you can't. Uh, two of them, maybe. I don't know. Point is, you get, you get some models you can look at. Pretty cool. Um, you just get ideas on how they work. You don't actually get to see everything. Oh, wait, no, actually. Oh, that's really cool. So, yeah, you can actually build all three of these uh, together on the same page. Because little three shoots out from number one. So that's cool. Oh, uh, wait, no, wait. You, you can build one and three at the same time. You can't build two. All right. Uh, anyway, continuing on with our story, uh, Luke decides to build his lightsaber, even though he comes with a lightsaber in the set. Um, and uh, when he called for help, uh, he got help from Biggs and his little rebel guy, and they came in with a giant walker to scare off the big monster. So that's pretty cool. And then they build a ship to get out of there. So yeah, man, these things—they're little comics in the in the big instructions. They're really cool. All right, future MC Lego Boy out. But yeah, you know, simple set. It looks dated, but you know, in 1999, come on. So, but I'm happy I now have it. I love it. So great, and it's not completely covered in dust yet, you guys. So. Anyway, this has been MC Lego Boy with 7140 X-Wing Fighter. Coming up next week is 7141 Naboo Fighter. See you guys.